Okay, so you know how everyone is always talking about the Great Pyramid. Right. Well, the Khafre Pyramid's right there, too, just a bit smaller. Oh, yeah. Almost like it's the quiet one, you know, uh -huh. keeping secrets just out of sight. Interesting. And now there's this brand new research using some pretty high-tech tools. I've heard about this, yeah. They're peeking beneath the surface, literally. And what they're finding is, well, unexpected is, putting it mildly. Wow. We're going deep on this today, exploring all the details of this study that's using something called SAR, Synthetic Aperture Radar, Okay. to look under the Khafre Pyramid. And folks, what they're seeing down there might completely rewrite what we thought we knew about the Giza Plateau, the whole thing. I'm all ears. Buckle up because we're diving headfirst into some seriously groundbreaking stuff. We're talking about potential structures underground that could flip our understanding of ancient Egypt on its head. That's a big claim. So let's lay it all out, break it down, and see what these images are telling us. We'll be focusing on a couple of key sources for you. There's a great piece on Ganjing World that gives a solid overview. I've heard of them, yeah. And they call from the actual peer-reviewed research by Corrado Malama and Filippo Biondi, published back in 2022. Those are some big names in the field. Oh, yeah. So our mission today, plain and simple, is to figure out what exactly these researchers discovered and why it's causing such a stir in the world of archaeology and ancient history. Sounds like a plan. And to really get the impact of this, we got to understand the method they used. This isn't just like your average radar scan. We're talking SAR Doppler tomography. Okay, getting a bit technical now. But stay with me, because this is important. All right. The coolest part is it's completely non-invasive. So no digging, no disturbing the site. This technology uses the subtle shifts in radar signals as they pass over the pyramid from multiple angles. I see. So it's like building a 3D image. Exactly. And the detail is incredible. They can detect tiny, tiny vibrations within and beneath the structure. I'm talking millimeters. That's amazing. Almost like listening to the pyramid breathe. It is. And that's exactly what makes this so exciting. It's not just about what's there, but it's like feeling the energy, taking the pulse of this ancient wonder. I'm starting to understand why this is so groundbreaking. Now, this isn't their first rodeo. The Ganging World article mentioned that Malanga and Biondi, they actually did similar work on the Great Pyramid. Oh, interesting. So they're applying this method to the whole complex. Makes you wonder what else they might find. Okay, here's where it gets even more technical, but bear with me. They use special software developed by Biondi himself. Okay. And this software takes all those raw radar signals and turns them into what they call phenonic information. Phenonic information? What's that? Think of it like using sound waves to see, like sonar underwater. Different objects reflect sound differently, right? Mm -hmm. So using the SAR data, they create a sound map of the pyramid's interior and the ground below. It's like they're listening to the pyramid, revealing hidden spaces, variations in density, maybe even movement. Wow, a sound map. That's incredible. So what did this sound map reveal near the base of the pyramid? All right, so based on all these fancy images, the analysis shows five count them, five identical structures near the base of the pyramid. Five, that's a lot. But it gets even more intriguing. They're not just scattered randomly. These structures seem to be linked by geometrically precise pathways. Like, imagine an underground network, deliberately planned out. It sounds almost like an ancient city beneath the pyramid. And what about the internal layout of these structures? So each of these units, they all seem to have five distinct levels, horizontal, and something that looks like sloped roofs. Seriously, this is wild. So this isn't some random cave or natural formation, right? Nope. The data screams deliberate design, planned construction. But remember, this is just near the surface. Right, right. You mentioned they went deeper. Much deeper. And this is where it gets really mind-blowing. They found eight cylindrical formations, way down below those first structures. Cylindrical, huh? What do they think those are? Their best guess. Vertical wells. Wells. Like for water. That deep. That's the thing. It's not just the wells themselves. Each one seems to have these descending spiral paths encircling it. Spiral paths deep underground. What could that be for? That's the million dollar question. These wells, according to the study, they plunge down almost 650 meters. That's deeper than the height of the pyramid itself. And get this, all eight wells are arranged in two parallel rows, north-south orientation. And where do they lead, you ask? According to the SAR data, they converge into two massive, and I mean massive, cubic structures. Cubic structures. How big are we talking? Picture this. Each cube is estimated to be about 80 meters per side. Whoa, 80 meters. That's huge. Practically as tall as the Kafir Pyramid itself. I mean, if you think about it, that blows any known underground construction from that era out of the water. This isn't just another tomb. It's something else entirely. Mind-boggling. So it's wells leading to giant cubes deep underground. What's the overall footprint of this complex? Well, the Ganching World piece suggests that this whole underground network stretches for almost two kilometers. Two kilometers. That's like the whole area under the Giza pyramids. The whole thing. And this is where the problem arises. 
This isn't fit with a traditional story, does it? Not at all. We were told pyramids were tombs for pharaohs, built with simple tools and manpower around 2500 BC. Right. But these structures, their scale, complexity, it just doesn't match up. Mainstream Egyptology has always viewed these pyramids as elaborate burial sites. Yeah, built with the technology and labor they thought was available back then. Exactly. But this research paints a different picture, one that's way more intricate than what we were led to believe. And it's not just the size, it's the precision. Right. Even the above-ground structures are full of complex math, pi, the golden ratio, some say even connections to the speed of light. It's hard to believe that was all just for a tomb. So this underground complex lends weight to those alternative theories, those that see a purpose beyond just burial. You're talking about ideas like the pyramids being machines or energy sources. Exactly. Some researchers are now proposing that the entire Giza complex, above and below ground, might have been a massive, sophisticated system, maybe mechanical, maybe for generating or harnessing energy. And remember those vibrations we talked about? The ones detected by the SAR? Well, that takes us right to the doorstep of Nikola Tesla. Tesla, the guy who obsessed over electricity and energy, what's the connection? He believed that pyramids could interact with the Earth's natural frequencies. And he was way ahead of his time with wireless energy transmission and all that. And he was deeply into something called scalar waves. This new research, while not proof, offers a tantalizing connection to his ideas. It's like his theories are suddenly finding new life. So we have this potential energy system, and then there are guys like Christopher Dunn with his Giza power plant theory. And Joseph Furl, who went full sci-fi with his Giza Death Star concept. What would those theories make of this underground complex? Well, imagine those cylindrical wells as conduits, channels for energy or sound. They might be drawing up or directing certain frequencies from within the Earth. Okay, I can see that. And with huge cubic structures at the bottom. Those could be like capacitors storing and stabilizing that energy. Dunn talked about using resonant acoustic forces for power generation, remember? So maybe those wells were designed to harness specific vibrations, just like his theory suggested. The possibilities are pretty mind-blowing, aren't they? But let's be real here. Getting boots on the ground, actually excavating to confirm all of this, it's going to be tough. Oh yeah, the Ganjin World article touched on that. Getting permitment to dig at Giza, it's like pulling teeth. It's notoriously difficult, and the Egyptian authorities, understandably so, are very protective of the site. So for now, all we have are these fascinating radar images and a whole lot of new questions. But even without physically exploring those spaces, the implications of this research are huge. Absolutely. We've got unprecedented insights into what lies beneath the Khafre Pyramid. This goes beyond the typical tomb narrative and throws the door wide open on the true purpose of these monuments and the tech the builders had. Whether it's an advanced energy system, like those alternative theories suggest, or something else we haven't even imagined, this changes things. It certainly forces us to rethink what we thought we knew about the ancient world. So let's recap. We're looking at evidence of a huge, complex, geometrically precise underground complex, all thanks to some cutting-edge SAR imaging. And this picture contradicts the traditional view that the pyramids were just tombs. The sheer size, the layout, the way those structures are linked together, it points to a purpose far more intricate and technologically advanced than what's accepted by mainstream archaeology. It's enough to make you question everything. Imagine the knowledge, the skills, the sheer ingenuity it took to build this. If these findings hold up, our understanding of ancient civilizations and what they were capable of could be completely wrong. And this leads to the big question, the one we'll leave you with. Given the scale of what we're seeing here and the possibility of some ancient technology we can barely comprehend, what other assumptions about the past should we be questioning? What other secrets are still waiting to be unearthed, hidden beneath the sands of time? We'll leave you with that. Food for thought, my friends. Food for thought. I'll certainly be thinking about this for a while. Me too. Me too.